Hi everyone, it's Gnomes, and uh, welcome to my 5k Q&A. Um, firstly, I want to thank everybody who has left lovely comments on both the Q&A and the last few community posts that I have made. Um, it's been a crazy last few weeks, and I'm really happy to be able to make content again. Um, but I'm also incredibly uh, humbled and excited uh, to see how much growth the channel has had in the last month. I really genuinely love making these videos and just watching everybody react to the stories that I've written and acted out. <laughs> um, it really makes all the hard work so much worth it. And I'm really glad to be back. So thank you for that. Um, I thought about recording this in like mono, but I already had the setup for the ASMR video, so you're getting some binaural activity. <laughs> um, so I guess I just, uh, formally wanted to thank everybody. Um, everybody's been so lovely. Um, I really wanted to make sure that this video was not only like a fun little get to know me better, but a thank you to everybody who supported the channel, um, left sweet comments, interacted with the videos. It has been an amazing thing to watch grow. Um, so thank you so much. Um, also a special shout out to my friends on Discord. Um, Y'all have been amazing and I'm super excited to see where we are going with that next. <laughs> um, you are interested in joining the community, I will leave the Discord link in the description, as I usually do since adding it to our page, um, since opening it. But I guess we can jump in to the Q&A. So I um, gathered questions from both the community page on my YouTube channel and um, I actually made a channel for my Discord server so that members there could also add their questions. And you'll be seeing screenshots as I answer them. So let's see. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so I guess I'll just start with YouTube. Uh, the first question comes from Angie Zoe's wife. I am sorry if I and mispronouncing any of your names in advance. I will try my best. Um, but the question is, do you have any prior voice acting and writing experience, or did you pick it up as a hobby? It's just that for someone so new to the VA community, you certainly seem to know what you're doing, and I can see your channel really taking off in the near future. Uh, so first of all, thank you. <laughs> um, flattered, for sure. I um, don't have any prior voice acting experience beyond this channel um and as far as my writing experience goes i'm not doing it professionally um though i have enjoyed writing for most of my life um so that i guess answers the question <laughs> um i did watch a lot of uh asmr vas before doing this so i'm sure that my experiences with that have kind of played into um, what I wanted or what goals I set for myself as far as voice acting and writing go. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. That was super sweet to say. Um, yeah. <laughs> the next question comes from Hans Willy or Wheely. I would love to know more about your world. It's so fantastic how I imagine it. I can even see some connections between the different ASMR videos. Is it a world you've created or got some more from? Uh, what, book, what shows or books inspired you to create such a magical world that even a person that never met you before can imagine and explore in their mind? Um, and don't forget to relax a bit how you illustrate it in your videos. Um, thank you <laughs> again. Um, that's super kind of you to say. and. Um, I'm really excited and happy to hear that my um, 
my stories and the world that I make feel very vivid. Um, so uh, the first question, uh, is it a world that I've created? Yes. <laughs> um, I, I did, uh, this isn't like a universe that was pre-existing or anything like that. Um, and uh, I, I pulled from a lot of different places as far as my inspirations. Um, a lot, I, I'm, <laughs> I almost got to think about this now. Um, so, I mean, I guess each individual story has their own direct inspirations. But as far as lore goes, um, I take a lot of interest or I take a lot of inspiration from um, some of the uh, books and shows that I watched a lot in high school and even middle school. <laughs> One of the authors that I used to follow a lot was uh, L.J. Smith and um, her Night World series. So I think it definitely had something to do with, or it definitely played a role in some of the inspirations for kind of the, you know, secret underworld or underground magical world. Um, I can't tell you if it holds up. Like, if you're an adult and you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to pick that up this weekend and read it, do it at your own risk. <laughs> um, I don't necessarily uh, take responsibility for my teenage taste, but um, I enjoy it. And I, I mean, I, I, I could reread those and still enjoy it because of the nostalgia at least so uh, but her world is also kind of this urban fantasy where um, humans don't know about the magical world below the surface so to speak um, so yeah I'll, I'll stop there for that one um, just because there's a ton of inspirations that I think I draw from uh, the stuff that I write uh, the next question is from DeMichael Galloway. Hi, DeMichael. <laughs> um, these are my questions. Uh, when did you decide to get into the world of ASMR? Uh, I guess I'll start there, and then we'll keep reading the rest of them. <laughs> um, when did I decide is a funny question, because I discovered ASMR in college and um, ended up doing my thesis on ASMR. Um, and the ASMR community. So I'm pretty passionate about the subject. <laughs> uh, because of that thesis and part of the project was um, to kind of engage with the community on some level. And initially the idea was that I was going to be making content on YouTube. So if you look on my About Me section, you'll actually see that this channel is like uh, really old. <laughs> I think 2016 um, was when I did that, and um, I ended up not actually, I made some videos actually, uh, we're not going to see those ever, but um, they were bad, uh, not like, I'm not being critical of myself or anything, like overly critical, but they're not any decent quality or anything, uh, but I ended up using those for more demo like presentation purposes and um, never really uploaded anything. Um, but it wasn't until, like, I would say this, like, past year, 2021, um, when I finally kind of thought about making my own role plays, um, audios. So, um, yeah, I, I would say about, like, around, like, last year this time, actually, which is kind of crazy, <laughs> um, because I had started kind of taking notes on how I would do these kinds of videos and like what I wanted and I had started taking notes on like the series and stuff um and I don't know if this is going to cover another question so I'm sorry if it does but oh, there's a car I'm not going to edit that out this time I'm sorry guys <laughs> uh but yeah I don't know if it's going to be covered later in a different question but um when I started this channel the one thing I was worried about which mm -hmm, big shocker that is starting to bite me in the butt um was making sure that like I gave myself a good amount of content that was ready to go so that I could kind of keep 
the flow of uploads kind of consistent. <laughs> um, so I had started like mapping out a couple of my series and writing notes on them and stuff like that. And then um, I wanted to have, I think, at the start I had about like four ready to go, like four videos before I uploaded. Um, but yeah, uh, once I did, I was able to kind of have that cushion going for a while. Um, what, uh, who or what was your inspiration to get into ASMR role plays, and what script is your personal favorite? Oh, I didn't see that question, Michael. I gotta think about that one. <laughs> um, but the first one, um, who or what was your inspiration to get into ASMR role plays? Um, so again, like, I feel like I was watching a lot more, uh, role play content around this time last year and just like watching a lot of videos and kind of like looking for the like holy grail like you know video that scratched the itch that I was looking for um and I would sometimes find it and sometimes I wouldn't and I would think about it um but as far as like finding someone who like actually does that kind of stuff um I actually uh was deeply inspired by uh Redacted ASMR and um hollow va and i think zisaku va zisaku va zisaku va my bad um all really talented asm artists who are making uh really cool narrative content um talented vas and uh i think i really enjoyed the ones that kind of i i really did enjoy the ones that i was able to get lost in a story so um, and, and that kind of had their own feel to their worlds and stuff. So those people, <laughs> I'm sure there's so many others, I'm sure. Uh, I feel bad kind of only naming a few, but, um, lastly, what advice? Oh, what script is your favorite, right? Oh, I don't know. Let me see. <laughs> I think like it's, um, again, like because they're series, it's kind of like, <laughs> um, I'm gonna pick one of my more recent ones, I think. Hmm. I'm looking at my page now. Uh, I feel like it's gotta be a more recent one. And not to say that my older stuff isn't something I'm proud of or anything like that, but um one of the lovely things that has come from um, making videos here is that I'm constantly working on my writing and, and improving because of the practice, or I'd like to think I'm improving. I mean, <laughs> you, you could be the judge of that. But um, so I just would like to think that the newer stuff is better <laughs> or has increasingly gotten better. Um, I think I'm going to say, for now at least, that. I am very proud and excited and happy about the way that the uh, Late Night Drive with the Girl of Your Nightmares uh, video came out. That's the third in the Kalea series. Um, I think just between like the dynamic of the character, um, I love Kalea. I think she's just like this chaotic, fun character to play and complicated at the same time. And I think that that writing was pretty solid as far as pacing and like the cliffhanger which I'm like a sucker for a good cliffhanger as far as like writing goes <laughs> so I'll say that one uh lastly what advice would you give to someone who wants to get into the ASMR world um I don't feel like I qualify as a good uh, advisor for that but maybe that's just my um What's it called? Imposter syndrome. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, that took a whole minute. <laughs> um, maybe that's my imposter syndrome showing. But um, I mean, I think like the advice that I was seeing other people say, which was just try it, <laughs> um, is sound. Um, I think like I'll amend that or piggyback off that, so to speak, and say like, if you're interested in 
getting to into ASMR VA content and you're not sure if it's something that you'd enjoy, um, maybe find, start off and find, um, a script that you like, um, pull out a mic, <laughs> uh, record something and see how it feels to do that. And maybe even like proof of concept. That's what I did. Honestly, I, um, I recorded a, a mock-up kind of video with a script that I enjoyed and just like, it never got uploaded. Um, just like went for it and then, uh, edited it to see if I was able to do all those steps and if I enjoyed doing all those steps because, um, you should do it if you enjoy it, not because of anything else, at least to start, <laughs> you know? Um, so the next question comes from Nora too, and it's, uh, the first one is, are you a writer by trade? Um, short answer, no. <laughs> um, I've always loved writing, always wanted to write, um, but I kind of put it on the back burner for a really long time after um, high school, after some, like, in the grand scheme of things, relatively small rejections that I, that shouldn't have uh, made writing less of a priority for me, but they, it did. <laughs> um, but I'm glad that I'm writing now, and I'm glad that I found this as a an outlet for it because I, it is something I really enjoy, and I'm happy that you all get to enjoy it too. Um, they said, "Edit better question. How do you form an outline for a character? Like, do you have dartboards for magical creature, personality, archetype, profession, or do you get a flash of inspiration and build out from there, or some other thing, other third thing?" Um, so great question, and I will say that my like process for creating an outline for a character or like just an idea for a character is a little chaotic and comes from a lot of different places. I would say it's more so the second one, the like flash of inspiration, but there is some structure to it. Um, for example, um, sometimes it's like comes from like a writing exercise, uh, Marlowe's video and Faith's, I'm sorry, Marlowe's series or character and faiths both came from that um like a structured like writing exercise two different ones but um marlo's was like more of like a prompt like a plot prompt um and then faiths uh came from a really i'll have to link it honestly but i, I can't even remember because i was just like i don't even i think it came up in my recommendeds or something and i had, I had just randomly decided to watch the video and i was like oh this is kind of cool um, but basically it's kind of showing you how to synthesize an idea or like a, a story idea from like the things that excite you most creatively in media and stuff like that. Um, and then there's like Daphne, <laughs> uh, who I know you all love. Um, <laughs> and, and she came from just like, uh, it was just a spark of inspiration in terms of like, I knew I wanted to do, uh, kind of, uh, valley girl, uh, succubus, because I thought that would just be such a fun twist, um, and so, uh, that was another character that was just, like, really kind of in the moment, like, exciting to, like, a, a premise that I thought about, and I was just too excited to keep kind of holding back, so I wrote the script, and I was really happy, um, with how that one came out and I guess that's also a really fun script that I wrote um, to answer an answer of the last question but like it also is the most successful video on the channel so it feels kind of like cheating to say that one <laughs> um uh yeah so I hope that answers your question Norad um next question comes from Ian Bailey Music um there's a few here so again um, the first one is, any hobbies other than writing slash voice acting? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I collect hobbies, like, a bird collects shiny things, I don't know. Um, but, uh, the ones that have stuck around the most, um, I enjoy singing. Um, I, I like to draw sometimes. 
um, I knit. <laughs> a lot of my hobbies are kind of like very cozy things as well. So like knitting, um, I like to play some video games when I have time. Uh, usually cozier titles, but you know, like Stardew or um, Animal Crossing, things like that. Um, although more so Stardew these days. I only started Stardew like within this last year, but I got really into it. Um, and I'm not going to mention it as one of my favorite games, which is a question I think I saw later on. Uh, only because I haven't finished the community center, uh, which means I technically haven't like completed the game. And if I go and say that's my favorite without finishing it, that just feels wrong. But that being said, I have a lot of fun with that one. Um, and, uh, I also just like playing a lot of those, like, cozier indie games, so, um, I'll talk about more of that later. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so, like, oh, I love cooking and baking. Um, I don't get to do it as much these days, but I really enjoy baking. Um, okay, uh, why the name Gnomes? <laughs> um, so, Gnomes is a nickname, uh, for myself. I wish I had a really cool answer <laughs> for that one, but I just wanted something that was like representative of myself. And I hadn't really made a username that wasn't just like my name with numbers uh, in a really long time. So I wasn't necessarily like feeling super creative. I had initially, fun fact, the channel name was different before um, when I had initially made it. Uh, for the thesis that I was telling you about earlier, um, I was talking about earlier, I, uh, the, the original name was The Cozy Spot ASMR, uh, but that wasn't really as, like, that didn't feel like me anymore, I guess, so, gnomes, I liked the nickname, um, it was easy and simple, <laughs> that's all I got, I'm sorry, um, and then the, the next one is, where do you draw inspiration for your scripts? I think I covered some of that, but um, I think lots of different places. I'm definitely inspired by the media I consume, like books and TV shows, movies. Um, definitely other ASM artists. Um, oh, that was hard. <laughs> um, but uh, usually coming up with a concept for a story comes from just like taking a lot of time to write notes. <laughs> um, I have my, I have an iPad with the, uh, Apple Pencil and I'll just like have my notes app open and like, or the, uh, good notes actually. Um, and I'll just like start scribbling down notes and like outlining stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I hope that answers that. Another thing, uh, I guess I'll drop another media inspiration here too. Um, Again, I don't necessarily claim to have the best taste in media or books or television, so take all of my inspos with a grain of salt. Uh, but another thing that, uh, another thing I was inspired by uh, is a show I watched in high school uh, called Lost Girl, and uh, it was on the Sci Fi Channel. <laughs> And, um, I feel like there's a bit of a cult following for that one, at least. Like, I've seen more written about that than maybe some of the other things I've dropped so far, name-dropped or whatever. But, just, like, the idea of the fae being, like, this umbrella term for other kinds of creatures is, is definitely drawn from that. And, um, I don't know. It, it's a bit of a comfort show for me. Uh, if I'm having a bad day, I'll just put that on because I know what to expect in every episode and it's cheesy and that's like the best part of it it's just like really cheesy fan like urban fantasy type shit like I'm a sucker for that um I really don't mind watching something that's like a little cringy or anything like that um because like I don't know it's kind of fun and like it if it sucks at least you get to laugh at it does that make sense um but with Lost Girl like I definitely have a soft spot for it because of nostalgia Anyway, 
uh, what types of characters do you most enjoy playing? Um, I feel like the best way to describe the characters that I enjoy playing the most is chaotic. <laughs> uh, I really like characters that are just like very much like right off the bat, you know what you're getting in terms of like their personality and their kind of stronger personalities. Um, I, I think that's why like I really enjoy doing characters like Kalea um, and Ava and Vanth. Uh, those are all very different characters as an idea and a concept. And I feel like obviously there's more than those three. I'm just naming a few. Um, but, you know, they're very different in their personalities, but they are all some level of chaotic <laughs> and uh, I don't know I just have a lot of fun with characters I get to play up their personalities um do any of your characters reflect your real life personality um good question <laughs> uh maybe I feel like I definitely obviously take some inspiration from real life and like you're always gonna kind of put yourself into the character um I feel like, uh, I would say Cat is definitely one that I could say has a lot of traits that I've, I'm similar to, um, in just like a little bit of snark, kind of chill, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think, oh, Kalea, <laughs> we, I, I think I get to really unleash my sense of humor with Kalea, so like, there's weird shit in there, and I, I enjoy it, a lot of the writing in there is for me, <laughs> um, and I'm glad you all enjoy it too, but just know that the weirdness, that's, like, a, the weird sense of humor, I, I, the, I think that that definitely applies, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think there's little elements here and there, uh, me and most of my characters. Um, I can't necessarily do the whole mosaic trend with them, just because there's a lot of different things there. But yeah, I feel like for sure I embed a little bit of myself into each script. Um, thank you for your question. Uh, the next question is from uh, Ellis Leitch or Weiche or Weichi. I hope one of those is right. Um, how long is the entire process for you to upload a video, including like editing and making sure everything is going right? <laughs> Longer than I'd prefer <laughs> uh, is the short answer. Um, but the longer answer is it depends on my schedule, to be honest. It's been kind of chaotic lately. But, um,. I'll usually be able to write a script in like one or two days because I'm slower than I should I want to be when it comes to my writing um and then uh it takes me a couple hours to record and uh, a couple like I would say like a day to edit and get the thumbnails and everything together mostly because I am a glutton for punishment in my processing and everything. Uh, but also, like, for some reason, every time I'm editing my videos, like, I think just having to listen to my own voice, like, I get so tired <laughs> and I get sleepy. Um, and not because of ASMR. Like, it's just, I'm tired. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, so I would say, like, the whole process, basically, it takes me the whole week. If I was being better and more efficient, it would probably take me less time. I have gotten two videos done in two, like in one week before, but there's a lot of factors in my life that are complicated now compared to then that make that harder now to achieve. Okay. Um, cats BQBE, I think. It might be cat's babe, but with a Q instead of an A for stylization. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm going to guess it's cat's keep. 
uh, Cats be Phoebe. Um, hello. <laughs> uh, what zodiac signs do you think some of the characters are? For example, Faith feel, uh, Faith really gives off Leo energy. Um, <laughs> that's so interesting. I, so like, I'm not gonna lie, I am interested in zodiac stuff, um, and I've definitely, like, I don't know. Uh, but I haven't really thought about it for my other characters. Um, and I almost feel, like, I'm almost afraid to say, because I don't want that to kind of taint how you want to perceive them. Um, yeah, so, like, that. <laughs> um, let me see. Okay, I'll do one. Uh, Rory's a Virgo. Fair? <laughs> Cat's a Capricorn. Okay, fine, I can do this. But also, this isn't canon, and if they're not these things to you, you are free to imagine whatever birthday they have. <laughs> but I feel like <laughs> uh, Rory would be uh, a Virgo, or a Libra. I Virgo, Virgo. Uh, Cat would be a Capricorn. Um... Hmm. Oh. These are trickier now. I feel like Kalea would be maybe like a Scorpio or an Aquarius. Again, like these are, it's tricky. <laughs> I think it's interesting that Faith is the Leo in your head. Um, yeah, I'm not sure for Faith. I could see Faith being a Leo or... Gemini, not that we're on Gemini, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, Vant is a Cancer. <laughs> this is fun and funny. This is all for the meme, I swear. Um, um, I'm gonna say uh, Daphne is maybe like a, a, a Taurus. <laughs> that feels right. Um, maybe. And I'm gonna say Lyra is... Hmm. Maybe a Libra. Uh, Marlo. Oh, God, Marlo. What are the signs? <laughs> I'm, like, forgetting now. I mean, maybe, like, Marlo's also a Scorpio. Maybe Marlo's, um, did I not pick an Aries? Oh, I feel like Kalea could also be an Aries. Um, and then we said the last one I was trying to do was Marlo. Marlo, I could see Marlo being a Libra or... Scorpio like just like the like kind of calculated coolness stuff like that um and then Ava ooh Ava I could see Ava being a Leo honestly um I feel like that feels right for her or Sagittarius one of those two. Um, is that everybody? Did I do everyone? I think so. Um, so those are my answers. They're all for uh, shits and gigs. Uh, so if you want to interject below, feel free. Um, uh, the last one for community post is uh, from Makaili. Hello. <laughs> um, the question is, can we get a setup review? And, uh, I did take some pictures that I'm now going to look at. I will say, my setup is not super fancy or professional, to say the least, but I tried my best. <laughs> um, right now, it's, uh, in a closet that I have emptied and padded a bit. I gotta get more padding. Um, to make my own little studio. 
Uh, but up until this point, because this is only a recent update, uh, I had it in a different closet that I had to literally empty out every time I wanted to use it. And it was connected to a wall with all the pipes in this building. So every time somebody wanted to use the faucet or flush or anything, uh, I had to stop recording. And it was also connected to our electronic box. So you could hear anytime somebody's wires were, um, like, like lights were on um, in the adjacent rooms. So uh, that wasn't fun. <laughs> but I finally figured out that this room is a lot quieter and transferred it over and was able to convert it. And uh, hopefully it sounds better. And I also don't have to take it down, which is great. Um, it's basically, I think somebody's going to ask later about the equipment so I can get into that a little bit more um, and I'll flash back to it okay so those are all the questions from the community post announcing the 5k Q&A um, I did get one more question from cool YT um, and they asked what's your favorite main character of any video game you've played um, I'm so bad My favorite main character from any video game I've played. Again, I feel like it's cheating to pick things that I haven't finished, but I, quite frankly, have played a lot of games to almost the very end and not finish them because I just didn't want the experience to end. It's a problem. So I'm just gonna kind of like remove that rule from myself for a second here. <laughs> Um, and say, and I don't know if this counts as a main character, because technically it's not like the person you're playing, but, um, I'm gonna say my favorite character is Axel from Kingdom Hearts 2 and the preceding, but I'm specifically talking about 2 for now, because uh, I've actually played through that one <laughs> significantly. Um, so yeah, there's my answer. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna go to Discord. Um, so, the first question is from Tallest Tree Audios. Uh, you'll see on the screenshot they are named Tallest T Audios here um, for reasons. <laughs> um, so, uh, the first question they had was, "What's your opinion on the Irish part of Bush Gardens?" <laughs> um, which is a bit of a Discord insider. Uh, we do have, I think, at least right now, two Irish, um, members of our Discord server, uh, Puka and, uh, Cass, and, uh, I got to be the one to break the news to them that there's a theme park in the United States that is, like, themed after the different countries, <laughs> and they have one particular area that was a, that, that's Irish themed, <laughs> and they had opinions. <laughs> so my opinion is that I'm really glad I got to share these things with them because it was lovely to watch their reactions. <laughs> um, I also think that it is quite an astute observation that Cass made that America seems to believe that Ireland stopped developing anything after like the 1500s because uh, it very much does feel like anything Irish theme is like medieval themed at the same time um the next question is uh, who are your inspirations when it comes to VA and ASMR work um I think I mentioned a few before but just to reiterate um just want to make sure we have everybody's names right here uh I would say that some of my big, bigger inspirations were uh, Redacted ASMR, uh, Hollow VA, um, Z Saku VA, uh, Era Serenity, um, some other ones, <laughs> uh, but those are the ones that are uh, at the top of my head. I really like the ones that the writers that or the creators on YouTube that were really kind of more narrative based and had the connected worlds in some, in some cases, uh, that was definitely inspiring to me. Okay. Uh, 
the next question is from Valerie Kalea's wife, one of my mods on Discord. Hello. <laughs> um, they said, uh, date Mary Kill, your characters. Um, that's messed up of you to ask me to do, but, <laughs> um, so like, I guess, who would I most want to date? Who would I want, want to marry? Uh, and kill. I, I can't do the kill one. I just feel like that would be messed up. Because then, I don't know. Uh, like, who would be fun on a, like, one-time date type deal? I feel like Ava would be fun. <laughs> um, Mary, like, who's marriage material? I mean, Lyra seems pretty sweet, and I feel like having somebody who is willing to be so kind and help me relax after a long day at work is a pretty dope deal. Um, and then kill, I mean, I'm not gonna do it, man. I'm just not. I can't. <laughs> but I'll let, you, I'll let you decide. Who, who would you want to kill? Um, Maddie G, hello Matt, uh, says, are you able to describe how it feels to have so many people watching you? Um, no pressure. <laughs> uh, it's, it's crazy. I mean, to be honest, like, I'm really bad with numbers, um, in terms of conceptualizing them. Uh, I know that 5k is like, I mean, I've had people like, kind of show me what that looks like and it's kind of insane um it's like an auditorium like a very a large one I don't know but like that's crazy um to have like 5,000 people basically say like I watch this and I want more um is really cool uh and even cooler to kind of see people who are you know really engaged with the plots that I'm writing and really taking an interest in like what's gonna happen next has been really cool so it's it's exciting a little nerve-wracking and um just like heartwarming I guess I that, that's what I'll say <laughs> um mouse says would it interest you to make a series of videos purely discussing lore um I I guess yes but I would depend on how I went about it I would want it to still have that narrative feel to it and I wouldn't want it to just kind of come unnaturally and I have had thoughts to make like little videos on kind of like those kinds of things exposing those kinds of things like in a more digestible I guess like compact video or whatever I don't know if that make any, made any sense but um Yes, the answer is yes, uh, if you are interested. So, let me know. <laughs> um, uh, Colored asks, where do you get your ideas for your stories? I think I covered some of it before. Um, so, usually it's a mixture of things, but they'll come to me and I'll just kind of start mapping them out. Um, the next question comes from First Gecko. How long does it take you to make a full video from creating the script to editing um, and everything? So I think we covered that too, uh, but like about a week. Uh, Maddie G again, uh, what are your three favorite video games and what is a video game that you think is underrated? Um, okay, so again, I'm trying not to pick ones that I haven't finished, which is a smaller list than I prefer to choose from but I would say my favorite video game um so like the one I always say is my favorite is Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door um I played through it so many times <laughs> and I finished it so many times so that says something um there's nostalgia there for sure um but it's so cute and it's a great story and like every Paper Mario after that has been a huge letdown honestly although the most recent one wasn't so bad but 
it was still nowhere near as uh, loved, beloved by me personally as the vows at your door. Um, I am also a pretty, I can't say I'm a big fan because I feel like a fake fan for not finishing all of them or playing through and I'm going to get shit from Helix. So what I'll say is <laughs> I really enjoy Kingdom Hearts and I will put that on my list of top three video game, favorite video games um, because, and, and one and two specifically, because I, they, they were a big part of my childhood, even if I didn't finish them all the way through. <laughs> um, and also, like, I, I did eventually get through one at least, and I can't remember if I finished two, but I really did like two. Honestly, two is probably my favorite of the series, so I don't know what that tells you. Um, and then, um, I know I said I would pick ones that I finished, and now I'm picking ones that I didn't, but, um, I guess, okay, um, third favorite game, I'm trying to think of ones that I would go back to, again, I can't even remember, um, I'm gonna put Stardew Valley as three, for now, I think this number, this list is gonna change constantly, and also, um, I can't think of any other games I've played besides the two that I'm about to say as my underrated selects, and I don't think that they're, it's fair to put them in my top three either. So, Stardew Valley, those are my three. I hope that was, yeah. I also really like Skyrim, so I could, I could put that there, but again, didn't finish it because I got to the last quest and, like, the, you know, story, and I just didn't want it to be over which is silly because there's so much after that, but I can't, I can't, you know, I can't explain my brain. <laughs> um, and what is a video game you think is underrated? I'll give you two. Uh, the first one is Coffee Talk. I feel like I really enjoy it. It's another, it's more like a visual novel, um, but I really like the coffee making mechanic and the art style and, is, and everything is really cool. Um, and then the second one is an older one and a definite, like, another thing that I feel like needs to have, like, I just, a genre too, I feel. So point and click puzzle adventure games were something that were like a huge part of my childhood, like playing computer games, and, you know, as a kid. And, um, I got really into them last year during the, you know, lockdown I guess two years ago now wow um so I played a good number of those and there's a car <laughs> uh one of my favorites that I found and played was still life um grittier title compared to the other ones that I listed here today but uh it's really cool like it's this woman who's uh investigating a murder, a string of murders, um, looking for a serial killer, and you have to, like, solve different puzzles, uh, to get through the plot, through the plot, um, so that one's a really good one, really, I think it's pretty old, um, I don't know when it came out, let me see, it's 2005, um, so like older ish i mean i guess paper mario is around that age too i'm not sure most of these games came out <laughs> around that time honestly so i don't know if that tells you how behind i am but i've got a lot of catching up to do <laughs> um next questions from hunk um out of all the characters you created do you have a favorite uh, i can't pick a favorite hunk i can't <laughs> I think there is, I think the nice thing about the setup I have is that I get excited about each character as I write their next chapter in the story, in their perspectives, or their respective stories. Um, so I can't pick a favorite, not personality-wise, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I do, like, I get excited about different things, like, um, for each, each one, and that kind of keeps me excited to write them, so I hope that's a sufficient answer. <laughs> um, the next
next question is from Snooze. <laughs> and um, the question is, would you rather fight 100 normal sized ducks or a single duck that is 100 times normal size? Oh, do I have to fight the duck? I don't know if I would be very good at fighting either, to be honest. Um, I'm gonna go for, this might not be the practical answer, I never, I'm never good at these. Um, but I'm gonna go for the single duck, because I feel like it's a lot harder to fight more than one thing coming at you than it is to duck and hide from something that's like probably a hundred times, if it's a hundred times bigger than a normal sized duck, then it's a good deal bigger than me, I'm assuming know how many ducks tall I am but <laughs> but I'm gonna go with that one because I'm assuming that if it's bigger it might be slower and I might be quicker and I might be able to hide that's my answer <laughs> um next question is from Char uh who is your favorite character to voice um oof another one that's difficult at least this one I can answer because it's not necessarily a personality thing. I feel like it's picking from kids. Uh, voices to do, oh, it is, it's, it's still pretty tricky. I'd say I really enjoy, um, I love doing Ava's accent. I love doing Daphne's accent. It's really fun. <laughs> um, and I love doing Vance too, because she's kind of like got that unhingedness to her that I, I really like playing up and that's really cool. Marla's is really fun, too, um, just because hers has, like, that air of authority, um, that I get to tap into. Uh, uh, another one from Maddie, and this one says, how long has it taken you to plan out the entire storyline, and how many iterations has it gone, to, gone through? Um, so, <sighs> it's hard to say, because for some of the series, I have it kind of generally an idea of what I want to happen but the in-between is kind of like vague and I kind of let it kind of take shape as I write them. That's just been what works for me. Um, and so like there's not a ton of drafting necessarily because there's not a lot of time for that. Uh, but in terms of like plot points and like planning, um, some of the stories are ones that I've wanted to tell for a really long time, but didn't necessarily have the um, medium the way that I do now with ASMR, which is really nice. I think I like finally figured out like why it took so long to kind of get that to fit. Um, so like for instance, I would say there are a good number of series that kind of come from um, a novel idea I had like three or four years ago that I had taken notes from but like it looks so different than it is then <laughs> and then um some ideas uh started off again like I said as simpler kind of notes in my phone <laughs> um sorry um and those just kind of developed as I wrote them and uh, the next question is also when you have eventually wrapped up the story what will you do then uh, so the nice thing is uh, with the way that I've got everything structured is that while everything's kind of like taking place in the same universe and some of the stories kind of overlap um, there's a lot of room for you know exploring more areas of this world so I don't anticipate all of my stories ending or my series uh closing um anytime soon <laughs> i feel like i'm just hitting like just breaching the surface with some of them um but i would imagine that depending on how the characters played out uh they would find other things you know other adventures um or you know uh that there will be more characters so by that time we all will probably already be kind of engaging with some new stuff that's that's got your attention as well uh the next question is from reading for pants uh hi pants 
Uh, what made you choose to start your YouTube channel? Did you have any hopes and or expectations going in? Um, so, uh, I covered them. What made you start, I think, um, getting into the ASMR stuff and just like kind of wanting to find more content like I was envisioning and then it got me curious to see if I, if I could do it in terms of hopes and expectations. Uh, I didn't have any. <laughs> I think, honestly, I think one of my expectations, which I've been pleasantly, for, well, knock on wood, um, proven wrong, I guess, was, um, like, I was a little worried going into it that I would have a lot of people uh, who maybe weren't necessarily nice in their comments, um, or just, uh, people not like the wrong people finding my stuff and, and maybe reacting to it negative, negatively um, but I've been really lucky um, in that sense everybody's been really sweet um, and the people who haven't been don't really bother me um, that much again, knock on wood, not an invitation please continue to be nice <laughs> I'm sensitive no, um but, no, I just uh, yeah, I guess my expectations weren't were, were lower. <laughs> I was, I, if I was getting attention, it's not like I was thinking I was going to get hate immediately, but I was not expecting people to be as kind as they were, um, and supportive, especially early on. I had a lot of people who were, like, rooting for me, which was cool, and hopes were just to kind of have an outlet to kind of share the stories that I wrote, and in doing so, it made me realize that um, creativity is wonderful and it's a great personal process and that can be very fulfilling by itself but being able to share the things that you make and make other people happy with them or like have them enjoy that is a really beautiful thing if you get to do it and if you get the opportunity to do that in any art form uh, you should do it <laughs> um, Z46 asks what mic do you use to record, and where did you get the inspiration for your stories? Um, so I think the second half is covered, but uh, mics wise, oh my god, I'm forgetting already. Okay. Um, I'm gonna pop up, hopefully, if I'm smart and I remember the setup reveal again. Um, so I use uh, two Rode NT1s um, for the I am a big nerd when it comes to ASMR, so uh, when I got the chance to upgrade my equipment from my Blue Yeti, which is what I started with, um, I treated myself to this uh, setup for my birthday. Um, and uh, yeah, I enjoy them. I hope you do too. <laughs> uh, Reading for Pants again asks, uh, Every Q&A needs a couple of softball questions. So, what's your favorite drink? Favorite pizza toppings? And where am I and who are you people? <laughs> I'm gonna have to let you answer that last one, pants. <laughs> but, um, for the first one, it's, uh, my favorite drink? Oh my goodness. I don't know. I... I like trying, I, I like so many different stuff. Okay, I'll, I'll be lazy, or like, gut, like, right off, straight, straight off from the hip, from the hip. My, my first answer, first answer, answer favorite, favorite drink, drink is probably, probably bubble tea, probably bubble tea, boba, boba, um, um, because, because there's a lot of different varieties, variety. variety. and also, and also I, have those I have those a lot, um, um, and you probably know that, probably if, know you, that if you saw any of the saw posts that made on Discord, made on Discord. Any, photos any photos of beverages, beverages from boba shop, boba shop. I generally like to go to the restaurant, the restaurant and they ask me what I want to drink. They, they don't have anything, have anything particularly unique, unique or, fancy or fancy or, or, or like something that I haven't tried before. before. I'm usually getting, like if it's just like, like soda, just soda. Um, like your regular sodas, regular I'm usually getting, getting water. water. Um, but like unique flavored sodas are pretty cool too. I also really like green soda. 
Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's usually either water or some kind of caffeine. (laughs) I'm Um, no stranger to Red Bull. (laughs) Favorite pizza topping. Um, Uh, Favorite pizza topping. Generally, I'll usually get pizza. Um, Margarita pizza. Generally, I'll usually get pizza. I like margarita Mm. pizza, too, if I'm feeling fancy. Beef and old tomato. Um, Mm. I also like, like, the Supreme pizza. Sausage, peppers, onions, um, olives, mushrooms. I'm pretty big. I'm a pretty big fan of anything on pizza, to be honest. I'm not big. Although I've tried anchovies, and that was my favorite. Um, <laughs> and yeah. An extension to the pizza question from Z: Does pineapple belong on pizza? Uh, I think I'm gonna lose some subscribers today. <laughs> Because I don't think this is a, a question that there is a win-win situation for. But I don't mind it. Um, and sometimes I enjoy it. Like, I'm actively looking for it. Yeah, so, like, I, I, I'm not going to judge what you put on your pizza. Okay? Do what you want. As long as you're not hurting anyone. <laughs> um, Mouse says... Uh, would you consider a collaboration with other voice actors? Uh, yes, I would consider collaborating. Um, it's definitely something that I want to make sure I have like a better process for my own creation of videos so that I'm responsible and capable of um, working with others. But yeah, I'm interested. I definitely love the idea of working with other uh, VAs. Um, and then Maddie says, out of all your characters, who would you snuggle with the most? Um, and I'm gonna fall back on the obvious answer, which is Lyra, because she could turn into a cat, and I like the sound of purrs, I find them very relaxing. (laughs) So that's my answer. Um, and then, uh, Char again says, uh, what are some of your favorite ASMR triggers? Um, and this is the last question um because i'm here (laughs) so give me one second so as far as asmr triggers go i like uh ear to ear whispering if you can tell (laughs) um i do enjoy good taps like tapping sounds i don't know if i have anything to tap right now this wasn't planned i just decided that this is what i'm doing now personal attention, inaudible, oh my god, inaudible whispering is like not for everyone, but that's definitely one of them, uh, layered, a lot of my normal audio, which I play around with on my channel, a lot of the stuff that I like incorporate, like any ASMR elements that I'll incorporate in my videos, it's probably because it's one of my favorite triggers, so, um, but I think those, na- those are the co- the heavy hitters for me. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so that was the last question. Um, I'm hoping that this video isn't too long um, or too hard to edit. I'm going to try to keep it very simple in terms of editing. But um, thank you all again for participating in the 5K Q&A. Um, this is really exciting and I excited to um, be seeing all of you in the next video and I'm so happy about how the channel has been growing and I look forward to interacting with y'all um, whether that's in the comment section or on discord and yeah I hope you all have a good one take care of yourselves